Hey there, Jamie Smith coming at you again with another quick tip. This one today is on lean body mass and how to calculate it. Uh, the first thing you need to understand about lean body mass is what it is. Lean body mass is uh, how is your body weight minus the body fat that you carry. So the first thing you need to understand in order to come up with a lean body mass and that is uh, the combination of your muscle and bone and skin organs, hair, uh, eyeballs, those that makes up your lean body mass. Everything else is body fat uh, and water and, and, and those things don't take up as many calories. So that's why it's important to understand your lean body mass. And so the way you calculate that out is by calculating how much body fat you carry and everything left over is lean body mass. So let's uh, head out first and, and figure out how to calculate out calculate out what your body fat percentage is. I just like to do that quick and simple, just do a visual estimation. Uh, if you've got a body fat scale, that's great. They're not super accurate. Um, you'll, you'll see a wide variance in a body fat monitor and a body fat scale, uh, as much as 5% if you measure in the morning versus in the evening. Uh, it's all based on your hydration level. So when you're dehydrated, your body fat is going to read higher on a body fat scale or on a body fat monitor. When you're rehydrated, when you uh, in the measure in the evening and you've had all day to drink and take in your fluids, then your body fat percentage is going to read lower than it does in the morning. So again, dehydrated is going to read higher. Uh, you know, it's going to say 20%. But then in the at the end of the day, when you're rehydrated, it's going to read closer to uh, accurate. If anything, uh, it's going to read you know more like 15%. Um, but that's where it's going to vary for you uh, greatly. So I don't rely on those to be super accurate. And also they're based on a portion of your body and recalculating based on that portion. You know, if you're using a handheld unit, it's only really measuring your upper body uh, electric impedance. Um, and that's only going to really measure the body fat in your upper body, and then it's going to try and estimate and calculate about total body. Uh, and vice versa, if you're one, if you're using one where you're standing, it's measuring from foot to foot. It's really going to measure mostly the uh, bioimpedance uh, of your lower body, uh, not so much of your upper body. And again, it's going to try and estimate out based on height and everything else what your overall total body fat might be. So they can be. Uh, up to 80% accurate, but the, still, that's a that's a wide variant. So don't count on them to be super accurate. But they're a good jumping off point, and they're also good for tracking. So use it, if nothing more than that, just to say, okay, is my body fat percentage going down on this scale when I'm measured at the same time, uh, same circumstances, um, each day, each week, each month? Uh, if you're seeing that downward trend, you're doing the right thing if that's what you're looking for, um, and uh, go from there. So... Uh, take that as a gauge. Also run out, do a quick Google search for body fat percentage images. And that's going to pull up uh, an article uh, on the site builtlean.com. It's usually going to be the first one, uh, first link there listed for you. And we're going to pull that up. Uh, this is written by a gentleman named Mark Perry uh, on the BuiltLean.com site. Uh, he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist, certified personal trainer, smart guy. He's got a lot of good information in this article. Take a look at it. What we're going to look at right now is just the pictures. Uh, <laughs> That's what I want to look at, just the pictures. Um, so what we do is we jump out. We can see here we've got a, a little grid of body fat percentages for men. You scroll down a little bit farther, we've got a grid of body fat percentages for women. This is a good visual guide for what different body fat percentages look like on men and on women. There's also below each of the grids, there's a little bit of an explanation of what you can expect um, to see vascularity-wise. Um, and muscle striation wise and everything else at different body fat levels. So read through those and you know give you a little bit better guide. But I like to go with a visual guide and this is look at yourself in the mirror and compare yourself uh, or, or take a picture of yourself even and put it side by side and compare it to these pictures and see where you fall. Um, just to use an example, um, I was 228 pounds and I feel like I was visually between this 30% and 35% uh, images uh, is where I felt I was uh, probably at least this heavy, maybe a little more uh, and not quite uh, as far as body fat percentage and then uh, not quite this heavy. Um, so I feel like I was in the 32 to 33% body fat range at 228 pounds uh, when I started my fat loss journey. 
So that's what I used as a guideline. I also verified that number with a body fat uh, scale, and I fell in those general ranges on a regular basis. So I feel like I was fairly confident that I was in that 32 percent uh, range of body fat percentage. So uh, now that we have an ideal for body fat percentage, we can take a look and figure out what our lean body mass was. And the way we do that is we jump into the calculator and we put in our total body weight, 228 pounds, times that body fat percentage, which we calculated out as 32% is where I was at. And we come up with a number of roughly 73 pounds. So that equates to 73 pounds of body fat. That 32% of my total body weight was 73 pounds, and that was how much of my body was fat. And so we take that number, subtract it from the total body weight to come up with our lean body mass. So if we take 228 pounds minus our 73 pounds, we come up with 155 pounds of lean body mass. Again, that's bones, muscle, skin, organs, hair, uh, everything that's not body fat. So that's 155 pounds of uh, lean body mass. And that's what I use to start uh, tracking my nutritional guidelines with. Come up with how many calories I need based on that, how much protein, how much fats, how much carbs from that. So let's uh, compare that to today. And right now, I'm weighing in at 190 pounds, and I'm at about a 15% body fat. And so we do the same thing, take 190 pounds times 0.15 for 15%. That's 28.5 pounds. Uh, so I went from 73 pounds of body fat down to 28.5 pounds of body fat. So again, roughly 45 ish, 46 pounds, something like that, of pounds of fat that I lost in my fat loss journey so far. Still got more to go. And uh, so well, again, we've got 28.5 pounds. So we're going to take 190 minus 28.5. And we come up with 161.5 pounds. That's lean body mass. Again, muscle, bone, skin, organs, hair, uh, 161.5 pounds. So we can tell from that number that I've gained uh, from 155 pounds to 161.5. Uh, that is, what, six and a half pounds of most likely muscle. Uh, I would hope my organs haven't swollen that much, but, uh, you know, hey, uh, six and a half, gaining six and a half pounds of muscle as well as losing 45, 46 pounds of fat is pretty significant and I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about those results. So hopefully this has been helpful and you can see how you can get a quick visual guide of your body fat percentage and take that number, multiply it times your total body weight and then subtract it from your total body weight to get your lean body mass and then use that number to calculate out your nutritional needs and your total daily energy expenditure. Uh, that's going to be important to know what your body fat percentage is when you're calculating out what your total daily energy expenditure is. I'm going to go through that in another video, but I just wanted to get you this one today so you can get a quick gauge and understand what your lean body mass is. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, definitely keep an eye out for the next video where we'll talk a little bit more about total daily energy expenditure. Talk to you soon. Have a good one.